What's going on guys? My name is David Lee and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make a sequence. Now, what exactly is a sequence? Making coffee, making tea, how to make coffee, how to make tea, how to set up your computer, how to install this or that. And with a sequence of events like Number step number one, step number two, step number three. This is what I'm gonna be teaching you and how to do it in video. So what we're gonna to cover today is how to film it, how to edit it, and how to make the edit appeal to the person without making them too bored. To turn something boring like making tea into something that could be a little bit more interesting, quick, easy, and enjoyable. Let's start off with the process of filming it. I have my camera and I wanna make sure that I grab several different angles. I put the camera to the left, to the right, up top, in the bottom, in the cup even. You have to do different angles because if you use the same angle the whole time, the video gets boring. So when you're filming it, you wanna put the camera in different places for each action. You, want, you don't wanna keep it in the same place because then it gets repetitive. When you're recording it, you wanna grab the crisp audio. You wanna be able to grab what you can with the audio in case you decide to use it. If you're not putting music over it, you want to be able to get those sounds of everything. You want to really hear and let people feel the experience with you. You want to be able to grab their attention. Like I said in my B-roll video, you want to appeal to all the senses that you can in a video. So you grab that extra audio, grab your microphone off of your camera, hold it closer to the action and record the audio. For example, I did this with the water. I did this with every action I did actually. So here you can hear the crisp audio of the water being poured compared to the GoPro audio. Now clearly the GoPro audio is not as good. So I was able to capture the better audio with my Rode microphone by holding it closer while I poured the water again. You just have to repeat the action. You don't have to do the same exact thing. Like I used a fresh cup of water, cold water, not boiling, poured it into the empty cup after I finished filming the video. So I repeated all my actions again in a faster motion so I could get the audio. And keep in mind that you only need to redo the audio if you know that you might be using audio or you don't know if you want to use audio or not. If you're 100% going to put music over your sequence, don't worry about it. 100% audio. If you're not sure, grab that second audio. Do it again and just grab it just in case because you can never be too careful because, you know, you'd have to go back down and do it again. And if you can't go back and do it again, then, well, that's it for you. So now we're going to jump into the editing process. So when you're editing a sequence, you want to make sure that all the clips are pretty short, like two seconds max, one second even, maybe even less than a second. Now this is because the human eye, the human mind, when they see something like you pulling the tea bag out, they don't need to see all the extra stuff of you opening the bag, they don't need to see you put the box of tea down, they don't need to see you open it, they don't need to see anything like that. They just need to see you pull the tea out, they're like, okay, he has tea, great. Because the mind can process all that themselves. They know that you open the tea bag. All of this is implied, it's easy. Like when you're vlogging, you don't need to show yourself walking because it's kind of clear that the mind tells people that yeah he's walking unless you know you're playing tricks with your viewers then yeah well whatever so you generally want to keep these clips really short a 10 clip sequence could be 10 seconds long and this is perfect for an Instagram story or something like that and when you keep it short it stays interesting because it's that short and it keeps changing over and over and over and the viewers won't get bored of staring at the same thing for too long because who wants to look at you pour water the whole way through? Which could be seven seconds, eight seconds. Who's gonna watch the whole eight seconds of you pouring that water unless they're forced to? Let's say it's in a movie, okay, yeah. You're gonna have to watch the whole thing. If it's a YouTube video, that could be the point where people click out of your video because your clips are too long. And a sequence works like a montage. You don't want the clips to be too long unless it fits in with the music you're playing. So unless it's fitting in with the music you're playing, if you have music, you wanna keep it generally short. Now some good practice for this is to play into that Instagram or Snapchat story timeline of 10 seconds. So you have to edit it under or at 10 seconds to be able to fit it in the story. If you want your whole entire clip to fit in the story, you wanna to try to hit that 10 second mark. 
So that's some good practice for cutting and editing sequences because you need to meet the 10 seconds to get your whole video in. So if you're trying to practice for this, try that out. Try that tip, edit for your Instagram story, your Snapchat story, submit it there. And if it gets cut off, keep going. Cut some clips shorter, cut from the beginning, cut from the end. Make sure to only get that main action that you really honestly need. Now here comes when overlaying audio. Now, if you don't know how to overlay audio, you drag both clips in, you double click or right click and you go to unlink. Now this will take the audio clip of the clip and the video clip of the clip and just destroy all links. So you can move the audio clip forward, backward and really like distort it so that it doesn't link up anymore. So now you can delete the video clip. Now you can trim the audio however you wanted to, how to be how short, to be how long. Now you take this audio clip and drag it over to the clip that you want to put the audio over. Now mute the other clip or the layer if you want to altogether, or you can delete the audio file by unlinking the other clip. Now, if you want to, you can relink these together. You can relink the new audio clip and the new video clip so that they work together. So when you drag one, it drags the other. It doesn't really matter. If you have already completed the sequence, you can just leave the audio unlinked. It's really up to you. So this is how you apply your newly found audio onto your clip. So once you've done that, play through your sequence. Watch it a few times and tell yourself, is this too boring? Is this weird? What can I work on? What do I need to fix? Is there anything else that I can do? By now, this is what your sh sequence should look and sound like. Real quick, real short, and now your sequence is done. So now you have a 10 second sequence, making tea or whatever you're doing, just really short, unless there's a lot more steps. It doesn't need to meet the 10 second sequence. 10 seconds is just a limited imaginary number that you don't have to meet, but it's just something to practice, you know? So that's pretty much it when it comes to making sequences. Let me know in the comments below. Oh, and congratulations to the comment winner of this week. If you wanna win a preset or a LUT, make sure to comment on this video below and you might win one next week. All you gotta do is drop a comment and let me know what is something that you wanna teach people how to do. Tune in next time and see if you're the winner. So make sure you guys like, this video, share this video, comment below, and have a chance to win as next week's comment winner. And smash that subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next video. Catch you guys later.